Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, or good night. If you are watching this video, you have opened up the Prologue Pre-Writing Deck and you've clicked on the video instructions on the very first page. And what we're going to do today is go through a plan to draft your prologue. In case you've forgotten the purpose of your prologue, on the second slide you can see here, I've copied and pasted the prologue instructions uh, onto, the, onto the slide. Now, this prologue pre-writing has three steps, a timeline in slides three and four, then you are going to connect your events, and finally you are going to plan and draft each event and turn it into a scene that, you, that will contribute to the narrative of your prologue. So the first thing to do, I want you to, to decide on roughly 10 events, and I want you to place them on a timeline. You can see here, this timeline starts in 2002 and goes all the way to today in 2021. For each of the year event, you'll fill out one of these boxes with who, what, where, what happened, and why is it significant. And this is really important because we're writing a story, and so the events in your story need to have significance. Otherwise, you wouldn't pick them as illustrations. So 10 events in the timeline. Then when you've decided, you've written, you've got your 10 or 20 or however many you decide to make, I want you to select four of your the most significant ones. And we're going to then copy them, and we're going to move on to slide number five called Most Significant Events. And in this sheet, we are going to connect the most significant events in a way that helps to form an interesting narrative. So the first thing we will do, as you can see in these little gray boxes, we will paste our event box from the timeline. And you can see here, I've got one, two, th I've done three events. And now what we're going to do is we're, we need to connect these events in a way that makes sense and makes a story interesting. And the way you connect beats in a story is through the words, therefore, or, but. And if you would like, uh, South Park creators Trey Parker and Matt Stone to explain to you the importance of the of therefore and but in narrative storytelling, you can watch the video right here. So we have an event. My parents adopt me. If that event connects, if the event that follows it is caused by the event, or we could say the word therefore, we'd fill out the therefore box. If the event doesn't uh, connect, and is, is a contrast to it, we would use but. So here we go. My parents adopt me, but my parents divorce, which leads to my second significant event that my dad and stepmom, that my dad remarries. So my dad and stepmom are there, we're at, Saint, we're at the Catholic parish, and it's significant because it introduces, uh, my step family is the one that introduces me to Catholicism. Therefore, so, I'm going to connect that with this other, and now I have my third event here, which is the, this, I read this book in high school that makes me uh, want to become Catholic. So, therefore, I am raised um, going to church in both the fundamental So therefore, I'm raised, and I go to Catholic fundamentalist church. So there, so that connects me to this one. So I have one event, which then something happens to negate that. But my parents divorce, my father remarries. Therefore, I'm raised in a two-church household, and that eventually, and which leads me to getting this book and deciding that I will convert to Roman Catholicism. So you can see that you don't want these events to just be one after the other after the other, but they have to connect in some, some meaningful way. We're trying to show significance. Then the final thing we're going to do is we're going to turn these events into scenes. 
So we'll copy the box and we will move on to slide number six called event pre-writing. And there you will see there are four of these slides, one, two, three, four, one for each of your events, which we will turn into scenes. So event one, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to paste our box into here. And when this is, so we know what event we are writing about. Now we have to help to try to turn it into a scene that is going to reveal or show the reader the significance of the event to me. So in order to, to, to do that, I, I've given you a couple of little charts here to help you out. The first one is called a sensory chart, and we want to show, not tell. So it would be time to write down any sights, sounds, smells, tastes, touches, feelings, desires. So um, the sights is the woman walking up. My mother tells me I was I didn't know this event, but I've heard about it. Knock on the door. Dialogue. Right, the touch would be mother holding me. All right, so we want to flush out as many of the senses as we can in this chart. And that will help us, it'll help when we go to write our scene, it'll make it more interesting because we'll already have words we can use to help show the readers what happens. And then down at the bottom of the slide, there's this second set of charts and these are your structure charts. So what you're going to do is you're going to use these two charts to organize, to decide what kind of structure we are going to use in this event. So each event, each scene should follow one of these two structures. It should either be based on a set up as a goal. So I want something and I face a challenge or it's a reaction scene. I react to a dilemma that leads me to some new path. So in this very first scene, the goal of my parents is to have children their challenge is they are unable. And the resolution is that they adopt. So that's the, those are the beats of the story. No, oh, the resolution, sorry. So it would be they get me. Okay, so as I'm setting up this scene, I want to show the, ch uh, you know, the challenge of not having, you know, I might talk about the sound, right? It's a quiet house. Um, it's, right, because there's no children in it. Um, my parents are probably feeling uh, anxious, hopeful, because they're waiting for me. Right? What do they desire in this scene? They want a they want to begin a fam begin a larger family, and to be parents. Right. So now that I've done that, and I kind of know, so I've structured my story. Now, if it's not a reaction, I'm going to whichever one you don't use of these goal of for the structures, delete the other one. So I have. I mean, it, this scene is a goal, so I'm going to delete the reaction. And now in this yellow box, I can write up the scene. I will have all of the material I need to help me write the scene. So you, will, this is for scene one. You would do the same thing for the other four events. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any other questions, feel free to contact me or talk with your fellow students who are maybe making some more headway in this project and good luck.